ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. It's Wednesday, September 18th, and your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in to today's program. You can join us always by calling the Miller Lite phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255. Miller Lite holds your great taste, only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. So what do we got on the show today? Well, of course, uh, we're going to still talk a little Marshall football. Next week is when we really get into it, but this week is still the open week. So we'll hear a little bit more from Doc Holliday, Isaiah Green. We're going to get his thoughts on the game against Ohio and just uh, getting into the open week. Also, we're going to hear later on from Marshall volleyball coach Ari Agnes as the Marshall volleyball team went on the road. They went to EKU, and they swept the Colonels. They improved now to 7-3, and three. EKU now 5-6, and six. but more importantly, the Thundering Herd continuing to sweep teams, finding a way to, to win. I mean, 7-3, and three, that's pretty good. First week, first tournament, maybe not their – they looked good, but they didn't get the wins they wanted, and then after that, it's just everything clicked. So I think that first few days of actual gameplay against other teams, just kind of finding their rhythm – and they, they're in a rhythm now, so we're going to talk to Coach Ari Agnes. Uh, she's going to join us a little bit later on the program also. Um, bad news, Marshall men's soccer team losing first time this season. They lost yesterday to the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. They lost 3-2 to two Tuesday night at Hoops Family Field. So the herd now drops to 4-1-1. One, and one. Uh, That ain't half bad still. 4-1-1. One, and one. I'll take that. That's not terrible. So the Thundering Herd men can get the job done. Hopefully the women will get the job done because uh, we've got women's soccer at Florida Atlantic tomorrow, 7 o'clock for the ladies, and then volleyball is back in action. And we'll talk to Coach Ari a little bit later on about that at Moorhead State, 6 o'clock for that one. As we mentioned, the Herd's getting ready for Cincinnati. Bearcats coming in to Huntington next Saturday. So I'm excited for that, and we'll definitely get into more about that as the uh, week progresses. But I'll say this, both teams should be well prepared. I'm expecting a a slugfest for that one. I I really am. I think that's going to be definitely uh, a big win for the team that gets it. I'm hoping it's Marshall on the home field. Maybe we get that Jones C. Edwards Stadium mystique back a little bit where teams would come in to Jones C. Edwards Stadium and lose all the time. I like to see that. I would love to see it get back to a point where you come in to Jones C. Edwards Stadium, you're almost guaranteed a loss every time. It, it's close. It's getting there. I, I just hope that this is what's going to happen. Uh, this is a pretty good team so far. Yeah, you, you get past that Boise State loss, could have done better there. Uh, this has been a good team so far to watch. So uh, let's hope that we get another showcase game for Thundering Herd one week from Saturday. Now, a story I want to get into later on. I want to give you a little bit of it now. And just kind of give you an idea what what we're going to talk about. You know, as a Marshall fan, that Marshall puts the team up outside of Huntington. Marshall spends money to take this team out, put them up for the night, keep them all together, which a lot of teams are doing. A majority of teams are doing this. And it's, it's a way to keep everybody in the same place. You don't have to go chasing after players. you got to find them. Hey, where's this player at? Where's this guy at? You don't have to worry because you've got everybody at home in the same place. You get them all in the same place, get them together, you keep them on a schedule, then you get them ready for the following day, they're on a schedule, bust them in, play the game, right? It's not a bad idea because part of it is coaches like control. That's to be expected. Coaches like control, but at the same time, logistically, it's a great way to keep everybody in order. It's an opportunity to, honestly, I mean, you're you're with your you're with your brothers on the football team a lot. I mean, it's a bonding. You can throw that in. I mean, there's so many things. We could talk about that, and we will. I'm okay with it. It does cost money, though. And so there was a report that came out. Gatehouse Media put together an investigative piece about what exactly is being spent. What are teams spending on this practice. Now, it's not really a thing for us. Marshall's spending under 5000 according to the report, okay, under 5000 a game. And so 
They're spending that amount. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is that uh, Western Kentucky, their media, their media jumping on this because Western Kentucky has some budget issues. And so with Western Kentucky, their football team spending almost 5000 a home game on hotel rooms in 2018, that amounted to about 24000 and change over the course of their five home games in 2018. Now, they're still one of the lowest spending institutions of the teams that booked home game hotels in 2018. Uh, they spent more, though, than maybe 18 reporting schools. You've got some schools that reported in this uh, survey, hey, you know, we didn't do that. But Western Kentucky, they came out as one of the lowest spending institutions of the schools that were spending money. They did spend more per game on home games than four Conference USA schools. They spent more than Marshall, which is right under 5000 They spent more than Old Dominion at a little over 4700 a game. Texas El Paso, a little bit over 4500 and Southern Mississippi, a little bit more over 4400 almost at 4500 And here's Western Kentucky um, trying to figure out, well, where do we get this money to do all this as an institution? And so that's kicking up a little bit. So we're going to talk about that. And we'll just go over some of the numbers. Um, Western Kentucky has been doing this for a while. A lot of teams are doing this for a while. So we'll talk about all of that. Uh, but when we come back from break, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We have got, coming up after a few minutes, uh, we're going to hear from Doc Holliday. We're also going to hear from Isaiah Green. We've got those two. We'll get their thoughts on the win against uh, Ohio and going into the open week. So we got all that coming up, and later on we're going to hear from the head coach of the Marshall Volleyball team, Ari Agnes. We'll go over everything that's happening with her when we continue with today's edition of The Drive presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Yesterday, the thundering herd continuing to bring out the brooms and sweep everybody that is in their way. Hopefully, that's a trend that will continue. No pressure. We put upon now the head coach of the Marshall volleyball team, Ari Agnes. She's with us now on the program. No pressure to sweep everybody. None. None. Yeah, no pressure at all. I mean, that's that's a heck of a thing that you got going there. I mean, just sweep all the teams and, you know, you get done early. You can get back and, you know, I don't know, have a... Have an early dinner? I mean, it's a good game plan. Yeah, I mean, if we could do this the rest of the year, it would be very, very stress-free, very easy to figure out when we're eating dinner, how we're eating it. We could sit down, maybe have a more delightful meal, but it's been fun. It's been it's been a lot of fun, and and they've worked hard, so as as, as easy as the sweeps may seem, it's, it's really tough to do, and we've been on the road for the past X amount of games that it's it's been really fun watching the girls develop through the, the toughness and, and the challenges you have on the road. Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes joining us on the program. And we've talked about the schedule, how you're away from Henderson Center for an awful long time. Is this the outcome you expected? Is this better than what you expected when you uh, were putting this together and, and working through this schedule? I mean, from a win and loss column, yes. I, I expected to learn the same types of things that we're learning because each team has been able to expose us in different ways. Whether we won or lost, it really doesn't matter. They still highlight things that maybe we thought were strengths that are actually weaknesses and then we can go back to next week and hopefully tighten those up. So I am, I'm just really proud of the girls for being able to each week refocus as hard as they have with school, with, with normal family life, with social life and be able to get on the road, get in the gym, get focused and, and learn how to win. So I, we as a staff didn't have expectations in the win loss column this year. And, and I'm happy we didn't because our journey and what we're trying to do is more of behind the scenes. Um, so I, I guess when those things are working, um, it, it seems that maybe that's that's what correlates to the court, which is great. Ari Agnes with us on the program. Marshall Volleyball, 7-3, sweeping EKU. And next up is Moorhead State. And you continue the odyssey. You're, you're getting to see a lot of the country 
street before you get to play any matches at the <laughs> Anderson Center. I mean, I mean, it's a heck of a job. I, w- I would love to get to see a lot of the country and, and beat teams. I mean, that would be fun for me. It, it, it's really fun. Like, it, it's a lot. Let's, let's <laughs> make sure we know that. But we were able to go to D.C. We went sightseeing. We Because we swept, <laughs> we were able to get out of there really quick and go downtown, um, see the memorials, walk around, let the girls kind of just relax. And, and then in St. Louis, we walked down to the Arch, went down to Mississippi, and just took some time. So it's been really cool. And, and we've got three international players that don't even necessarily understand what a lot of these places are. They've just heard about them or read about them in their own countries and they come here and they get to experience full hand. And I do think that that's one of the perks of being an athlete and being able to be a college athlete that travels. And and this is a benefit while you still then have to do your job on the road. So it's gone really nicely hand in hand and and they've been just, again, really so great on the road. I, I can't express enough how amazing this team has been. Do you feel at some point when you do get home that it's going to throw you because you're going to have a completely different routine than you have now? <laughs> or are, are you going to do what football teams do? Are you going to bust the team out of uh, Huntington, maybe get them, <laughs> get them to stay in uh, Barbersville or Charleston the night before and then bust them in? I mean, how are you going to do that? <laughs> No, no, they'll be fine. We we give them a lot of freedom on the road in a sense of they're they're adults and and we try to make the road just as we would home. And so we're very transparent with how things are and what we think is important the night before. But I mean, last night, yesterday, we drove to EKU during the day and came back. So I guess you can kind of look at that as a home game just longer, um, just because we didn't stay the night there. We just got up, drove over, played, drove back. So I think that I think they'll be just fine. I think that they all want to win so badly and they want to give their best performance, especially at home, that I actually think they'll probably take a little bit extra care of themselves while they're here. Have you found that the early success has led to the later success? Because it feels like it's contagious. I mean, that first tournament, there's a lot of things that could have went your way to, to get a couple more wins, but you're looking at this team, you know, from the outside and looking like, oh, okay, hey, uh, this uh, this volleyball team already looking pretty good. And then you start to steamrolling and winning a couple of tournaments. And now you're seven and three and you're starting to sweep teams. And uh, <laughs> it just, it feels like uh, there is like already the culture of what you're looking to establish has already sure. taken root. I think it has, and, and and we have our leadership to thank for that, but also my staff has just stayed very diligent in making sure that the message stays the same all across the board. Um, so I do think that we walked out of the Indiana game, and we we were, everybody in the locker room was happy. We played really well. They, they were just better than us that day. So I think that because we don't harp on them that winning is the most important, there's hopefully not that stress, so then they can play free. That's, that's kind of our goal is yes, we want to win and we will put ourselves in the best position too. But sometimes when you think about that, your anxiety gets so high as an athlete that you make more mistakes. So we were able to come back from Santa Clara and Indiana and learn from those. And and they were able to teach us some really good lessons. We then played Troy, who that one of the best defensive teams that I've come across, nothing hit the ground and it was frustrating. And so now we try to emulate what they did so we can use who we've seen and what we've seen. You know, Indiana, we try to we try to steal some of their blocking techniques. And then Troy, we try to use some of that from from digging and, and different coverage plays that they had and getting up quick in transition. So every loss that we've had and, and everything that we've kind of quote unquote suffered through, we use as a learning technique so that they know that something good came out of this, which I think keeps their head high to be able to like, okay, it's cool if we lose because we're going to learn from it so that later on we're a little bit better. But early on, they were just so okay with learning and taking the loss because they've given it everything they had there. We, as long as we leave everything out on the floor, there's nothing else that we can try to do differently. And, and we embrace that. And so when we do lose, it's not a traumatic moment, if that makes sense. And it also seems that everyone's bought into the team concept. And so when everyone plays at a team concept, sometimes uh, people start to pay attention and you get a Destiny Leon named Conference USA Co-Defensive Player of the Week. So mm-hmm. it's her first weekly award, second for your squad this season. So you play well, people start to notice. 
Yeah, and and we really emphasize she's come a long way. She this spring she's a phenomenal athlete, and and we just really tried to hone in on making her a phenomenal volleyball player. Um, and she's embraced it, and and she had really high expectations for herself that we actually had to kind of just bring down a little bit of let's just let's worry about the team. So she was more worried that she was letting the team down when she wasn't performing instead of the other way around. So once she embraced the, the growth mindset, and and maybe I just need to do my job even if that means I don't get 10 kills and 10 blocks. Um, she completely transformed as a player, and, and that's what we saw this past weekend. She's really fun to watch. Between her and Sierra, it, just from a, a fan standpoint, it's, it's a really exciting game. Yeah, we need to mention her as well. She was named Co-Offensive Player of the Week back on September 9th, so uh, you've got her, you've got Destiny, you've got a couple of outstanding volleyball players, and they're just two cogs in a team that seems to have lots of talent. <laughs> It's, there's a lot of talent out there and, and being in practice. And, and I think sometimes you can get some talent and you can have some animosity on a team. And we don't suffer from that because like you were saying, we are all bought in and, and we are all ready to take the charge and they fully understand who's kind of leading us. But, you know, if they don't have a great game, we've got a whole bench ready of kids that, that are ready to go in and take that lead. So it's been fun. It's there. They are really good players that are surrounded and they're able to shine because of the other players that maybe aren't is noticeable on the staff board, but Amber Weber, Sarah Shank, they keep our back row flowing that is able to get Destiny the ball. And and we've got two phenomenal setters between Sydney and Gabby, and, and they're just spreading the offense so that we can get Destiny as many sets as hopefully Sierra, and they can just terminate as much as possible. Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes joining us on the program. So the road trip, Moorhead Invitational. You've got uh, Moorhead State on the 19th. You've got Coppin State on the 20th. And then you've got Southeastern Louisiana on September 20th at 3.30 p.m. So you got an 11 a.m. and a 3.30 p.m. match on the 20th. Uh, then you get to come home. Yeah, I mean, it's you've been home, <laughs> but you actually finally get to come home and play a match. I know, I know. It's it's going to be really great, and and it's been um, it's been a journey, but but we've we've gotten to know the kids because we're with them a lot more. Um, we've gotten to bond with them. We've gotten to get on a more personal level, which has been really fun, and find out some are funnier than we thought they were, and they're just they're a really fun group to be around. And you can tell even just by watching our bench that that they are all in it together, which is awesome. So coming home is going to be such a spectacular moment because they're going to get to show off everything that we've been working so hard with, and. This weekend's going to be tough. It's, I mean, tomorrow, I guess, is already here. So Moorhead has done a phenomenal job watching film on them. They're big and strong, and, and we've got to do our job defensively and find some different ways to score just based on their defense. And so if we can stay focused enough, we should be able to come out with a W. But they are really, really tough. <laughs> um, and so then, and we just go one game at a time. But with Coppin in Southeast Louisiana, we're also, we're just excited to end on a strong note and, and to be able to put our, our best foot forward that hopefully leads into Southern Miss next week. Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes with us on the program. Okay, I've got to ask, um, I, I don't know how I'm going to ask this. So I'm just going to be pretty straightforward, okay? okay? Um, the director of volleyball operations, Jake Agnes. Good <laughs> yeah. guy, right? Good guy. Right? Does pretty Great guy. Good, does a pretty good job. He keeps um he keeps the clock going for me. I mean, uh, yes. Um, I get a question. His wardrobe choices, though, just a little. Oh, you saw it on. Uh, you saw it. Um, I finally get my vision back a couple of days ago after seeing that. Hey, I think you're just jealous because I think it's a phenomenal jacket. I I I don't know if I agree or disagree because. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, it hurt my eyes when I saw this jacket. I mean, oh, uh, where did that come from? It, it, I mean, my mom found it. What? I, I think Walmart. I don't. I don't know. She was it. It's somewhere in Huntington. It's somewhere around here. But hey, we. I think it's a great jacket. Like I kind of figure out how to get it tailored in like a women's size. <laughs> I'm sure if you uh, you ask nicely a couple of times, somebody will do that for you. Um, and what we're talking about, if you don't have Twitter, you know, maybe it's a good thing because, uh, yeah, the director of volleyball operations, Jake Agnes, um, he um, he has this jacket that has um, every green Marco logo ever made, all put into one jacket. I mean, I think all the logos that were ever printed found their way on this jacket. I. Yeah, I, I think they're all on there for sure. <laughs> There's no missing anything. But we were we had a long layover in Charlotte, and I don't know how many Marshall fans we found, but it was much more. And we were just he was a walking billboard the whole weekend. It was great. <laughs> I am 
I am all about the jacket. <laughs> so a uh, new team. You know what? You, maybe the equipment uh, manager, maybe your equipment manager, maybe uh, they can work on uh, maybe getting that customized for you. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think so. I think I think it's got to happen at some point. Um. Yeah, that's a jacket. I'm I'm looking at it right now. I'm just um. I, I can't look away. You, you know when you you, you I, see you exactly see something. Exactly though. Yeah, you see an accident or something where you you know you should look away, but you can't. That's you can't. You what's, can't. What's going on? Here. And he's 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 wearing it well. I mean, he's all into it. Just the the photo oh, itself. He's, he's all for it. He's all for it. He, you will never put any kind of loud suit on him that that he's not all in for. Um. I mean, I respect the game. I do. Uh, I, I don't know if I respect. <laughs> the jacket, but I do respect the game Com- completely. <laughs> I respect the effort, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would never be caught in a, I mean, I, I have no words for that other than, um, if well, don't it, never say never. Okay. You don't know what bet you may lose. And then that's what we're going to put you in. Oh, we, are we getting to that point now? Okay. I think we have to. I think that you are underestimating the greatness of the jacket and therefore we need to embrace it. Okay. I'll let you work on the, uh, I'll let you work on it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it looks like it's going to match the new court that they're putting over the Henderson Center. I'll say that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, you weren't expecting that. You know what? And I wasn't expecting no. to see that photo either when I opened up social media one day. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. It's a thing of beauty for sure. Go look it up. It's on the uh, Herd Volleyball social media account. Actually, <laughs> just what you need to do because... Um, it's a it's a fun account to follow. Uh, follow follow Ari, of course, but Jake Agnes. Follow him on Twitter. Your director of volleyball <laughs> operations. Um, that's an amazing jacket. I, I'm going to give him props for that. Uh, I would never be able to support that. Is that is too great. But uh, you know what? When that you have, is too great. When you have a winning record and you're sweeping teams and you're seven and three, you can do whatever you want, Coach. Whatever you I want. I think honestly. To be fair, I think he would do it even if we weren't. So <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you, too. Uh, thanks for coming on and doing this again. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, we'll we'll do it again soon. And, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I need to look into a new jacket. Um, I mean, maybe Jake can help so. me out. I would completely agree. And that's what you need to wear to our next to our first home match on the 27th. I think I, it's only fair. I don't think I could find that. I don't think I could find another one just like that. Uh, I'm going to have to search high and low, but I will look. <laughs> I will search high Good. and low, uh, and I will start. Okay. Hitting, I'll start hitting my uh, Huntington area WalMarts for that, since that's where it came there from. There we go, <laughs> Coach. There uh, we go. Success tomorrow. Let's uh, hope we're talking about a Moorhead State victory and uh, onward to better things. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's Ari Agnes, head coach of the Marshall volleyball team, and of course Jake Agnes, who uh, you can follow him on Twitter, and uh, maybe he'll post some more social media photos of uh, the most. Um, <laughs> Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. you missed any part of today's show, you've got a great way to go back and get it. That's right. You can go and get it on the podcast. That's right. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, tune in wherever you get your podcasts. We've got you covered. Just search The Drive with Paul Swan. So we're here today on Wednesday. We've got no game coming up this Saturday, and then the herd will get back into focus on Cincinnati. And then, more than likely, they will go and have everything done, bust up the team, take them off, out of town, not that far, but hotel accommodations the night before, and they'll be getting ready for the game on Saturday, next Saturday. And so um, they'll spend an estimated, going by uh, a report that came out, from a gatehouse media investigation, Marshall will spend about $4,924.17. That's the last year's figure. And, of course, uh, the reason I know this is because uh, of this investigative piece. Um, it was a gatehouse media report. They filed public record requests with 109 football bowl subdivision schools. Of the 101 universities that answered the reporter's request, 93 of them booked home game hotel rooms in 2018. And, of course, the story that I found was on Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky spent more than 26 reporting schools in total. Eight reporting teams chose not to stay in hotel rooms for football games, but uh, they spent more than 26 reporting schools. They spent more per game on home game hotels than Marshall, Old Dominion, Texas, El Paso, and Southern Miss. Uh, They spent less per game than Florida Atlantic. You know how much Florida Atlantic spends? Almost $10,000 a home game. 
$9,623 is what they spent last year. What does Texas San Antonio spend? $9,554 and change. North Texas spends almost seventy-eight. That's right, seven thousand seven hundred and ninety-six. It's a lot. Florida International spends six thousand. Charlotte spends almost six thousand. They're at five thousand six hundred and sixty dollars. Now I can see why Florida Atlantic would spend a lot of money because are you trying to book a hotel room in Florida in that area? You're trying to tell me you're going to get a rate? No, you're not. Now, I can see, again, rooms probably cost a little bit more for Texas San Antonio to deal with. North Texas, yeah, Texas, probably rooms probably cost a little bit more. Uh, Charlotte area, I can see it costing a little bit more. Uh, I can see uh, Florida International, same problem as Florida Atlantic. Um, they've got their budget a little bit better, it seems, or they're getting a better deal. I don't know. But Marshall's at about the 5000 range, Old Dominion. Uh, Texas El Paso seems to get a pretty good deal in Southern Miss. Um, and that seems in line to me. I, I don't think... Uh, they're getting highballed here on on the price, but that's not the issue. But Western Kentucky, it's an issue because uh, they've got budget issues. They've got budget issues. And you compare that, though, to some other programs. Like, for example, since Western Kentucky is the focus of the report that I read today, Kentucky football spent 10339 per contest on home game hotel rooms in 2018. Louisville, however, spent 6514 per game on rooms last year. Now, how much is the budget for athletics? The budget for athletics for Western Kentucky is $22.6 million. Western Kentucky also receives $14 million and change, almost $15 million in direct institutional support from the university. That was a uh, 2018 fiscal year report. Uh, it was uh, an article that came out in the uh, local paper uh, on April 30th. Now, here's what Western Kentucky says. Now, again, I'm not putting Western Kentucky on trial or anybody for this, but I just found it interesting that this is now an issue because, again, the cost of education, you've got budget concerns, and this is what they say. They say that housing the team in a hotel the night before provides a controlled atmosphere in which the program can go through its standard pregame operations with a greater efficiency including numerous meetings, film sessions, and other preparations the night before the game. This is what was also added to this. It also avoids having the team scattered across several different housing areas and provides a more restful environment away from the distractions of a Friday night on campus and beyond. They also um, have a state trooper escort, which is common, actually. Uh, Western Kentucky pays 3600 per game for the state trooper escort, plus uh, 43 cents per mile. Pretty good deal, right? And it's noted that providing a state trooper escort for visiting teams is required by Conference USA policy, but both non-conference and conference opponents provide the Hilltoppers a police escort when they play on the road. And that's just common. That's just, it, it's common. It makes sense. It costs a little bit, but it makes sense. You, you don't question that. I don't question that anyway. But the issue here is they're getting $14 million and almost $15 million, really, and direct institutional support from the university. And the cost for the housing, and they do it for football. They don't do it, they don't do it for the other sports. The cost amounts to almost 25000 over the course of their five home games last season. And I'm sure costs go up. I don't know what kind of rate they get or if there's a discount. I don't know. But the cost for them is 25000 and that's five home games. Now, if you read the Gatehouse Media Report, there's a, an assertion that Hey, look, this isn't doing these kids any favors because it's disrupting sleep. This type of activity, this type of, of doing this, taking them away, putting them in this situation, it's it's actually disrupting their sleep. Also, there are some in education circles that say, look, you, you can do this a different way. You can do this with on-campus facilities, housing. There's a way to do this. And this is just an assertion from academics, again, going by the Gatehouse Media Report, that, look, you're putting student-athletes above everybody else. Uh, I'm okay with the fact that teams do this. I don't know where the money's coming from for all the individuals and uh, universities that are in these reports, but uh, I will say this, the fact that if everybody's together on a Friday night, I don't have to worry about anything. If I'm the coach, I'm the I'm the president, I'm the athletic director, I don't have to worry about it. Well, you know, 
You do it on the road at home. I know, okay, they're in a routine, and then I got them. Night before the game, I got them. I'm going to lock them down. Going to get some stuff done, and then I can or have an orderly bus trip. Don't have to track anyone down. That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. West Virginia Metro News.